Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. If you have received this video as an attachment to our email, you have the prayer of the day, the readings for Easter 4, and two of the hymns that we would sing together if we could gather. We will not read the first or second readings as part of this video, but as on other Sundays, I encourage you to read them as part of the service. It will enhance your worship experience. The fourth Sunday of Easter is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. The psalm for this morning is the familiar Psalm 23, and the gospel is from John chapter 10, where Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. We will weave the hymn, Shepherd Me, O God, throughout our worship as a way of including our psalm and worship this morning and in celebration of Jesus being the good shepherd of our lives, both individually and collectively. So we begin with a thanksgiving for baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent us the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So at this point we'll sing the refrain for Shepherd me, O God, I'll have Deborah play through the, uh, the refrain, and then I'll sing it. I should mention that uh, uh, Deborah is here with me, and so is Brittany today. And so I certainly, as every week, uh, very much welcome Brittany and her talents. Uh, it's good to have Deborah here too, and to have her play. So you play the refrain, I'll sing it through once. <laughs> the book so I get the words right and we'll all sing the refrain together. Shepherd me, oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. So as we go through the service, there'll be verses each time. Um, and so we'll all sing the refrain together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety 
through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice, that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we'll have verse 1 and the refrain of Shepherd Me, O God. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the fields of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Gospel for this morning is uh, from the Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. This thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So verse 2 of Shepherd Me, O God, and then the refrain. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall see. So I'm actually going to begin my message this morning with a reference to the first reading from Acts. Um, the first reading throughout these first four Sundays of Easter have come from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. So Acts 2 is a description of the birth or the formation of the church while people were gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. So now after four work weeks of reading from chapter 2, we are very cl uh, close to the end of this description. And Peter addresses the crowd. And many are cut to the quick, and they want to know what to do. So Peter says, repent and be baptized. And about 3,000 people were baptized on that first day. So there's your first megachurch. <laughs> Um, this is where our reading begins. And the first verse of our reading is this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. So we can see in this short, singular verse that by the time this is written, there is already an established rhythm within the fellowship of believers. 
they devote themselves to the teaching of the apostles, to fellowship, that is, for caring for each other, for the breaking of the bread, to the breaking of the bread, which is communion, and to a life of prayer. You know, there are many reasons why we maintain the form of liturgy within our worship. And one of those reasons is that of an established rhythm. So the overarching rhythm for worship is gathering, word, meal, sending. Or if you will, gathering, um, word, prayer, sending. So we begin with a focus on the font. And throughout the season of Easter, it is a thanksgiving for baptism. A remembrance and celebration of our new birth or rebirth and incorporation into the fellowship, into the body of Christ. That is followed with a hymn or a song that is intended to symbolize our gathering together in fellowship, joy, and faith. Then there is a greeting which identifies in whose name we gather. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So from there we go directly to the Kyrie in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. And the response, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Then, because it is God's nature to have and to show mercy, we sing glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. The prayer of the day, which is next, begins to shift our focus from gathering to the word, where we hear a reading from the First Testament, we respond with a psalm, then we hear a reading from the New Testament, followed by a reading from one of the Gospels, and so on and so forth. Thanks be to God, I won't go through the whole liturgy for you. You get the gist, and you know by now. Um, maintaining of the rhythm of the liturgy isn't done so there is never any change. Did you hear that? Maintaining the rhythm of the liturgy isn't done so there is never any change. The rhythm of the liturgy is kept so that when change in our lives does come, be it small or gargantuan or anything and everything in between, the rhythm of worship, fellowship, the scriptures, the breaking of the bread, and devotion to prayer remain constant. I had a nice chuckle the other week when I received an email from John and, and Abilene. Hi guys, I know you're watching. I didn't check this with you beforehand, but it's okay, it's all good. John wrote in his email that there is a peal on his phone that summons him and Abilene to worship at 10.30 each and every Sunday morning. So he has an app and he sets it to 10.30 on Sunday morning. When the app goes on, off and they hear the ringing of the bell, John and Abilene turn to worship. The ringing of the bell at our church, St. Matthew's, summoning us to worship every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. is indeed an important part of the rhythm of this worshiping community. On March the 11th, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a world pandemic and nothing for anyone has been the same since. My daily rhythms, as I'm sure many of yours, have been disrupted. The first concerns have really been ones of panic. What do we do now? How do we have worship together now? What about occupations and pay? What do you mean, my, grand my granddaughter said, we can't go to school. How do we see our friends? Is this ever going to end? I think that we're kind of through the first stages or portion of panic. And now as, as things start to kind of maybe settle into a bit of a new rhythm in some way, shape or form, I'm beginning to ask myself what from my own daily rhythms 
am I able to retain? What needs to be adjusted and how? Which of my daily rhythms have to be abandoned altogether? There will be many of these periods to come, I'm afraid. And I sometimes ask myself, is this what the disciples experienced as a result of the crucifixion? They locked themselves away in a room in order to be safe. What do we do now, they ask. Our whole world has been turned upside down. Then Mary, in John's Gospel, shows up and tells them she has seen the Lord. How did she know it was him? He called me by name, she says. I thought he was the gardener. Then he said my name, and I recognized his voice. I wonder, did the disciples ever recall this conversation Jesus had with them before his death? Hear these words again. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. So again, Jesus said to them, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Most of the time, a gate is used to separate, to keep some in and others out. It is also used for safety and protection. A baby gate is a good example. A gate to keep out your dog out, a gate to keep your dog out so he doesn't dig in the garden is another common use for a gate. Jesus, as the gate, is open. Did you notice that? Jesus, as the gate, is open. People can come in and go out to pasture freely. Here is found safety, security, protection. Welcome, an open door community, safe keeping, life itself, and abundance. We may not know what the future holds or what rhythms can or will be retained. We can be assured that Jesus goes before us. Jesus is the gate. That Jesus calls us by name and never abandons us. The rhythm of worship, fellowship, the scriptures, the breaking of the bread, and devotion to prayer will be constant in reminding us and in maintaining our identity as the ones for whom Christ died and rose again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Shepherd me, O God. Verse 3 and 4.
Let's have our intercessory prayers. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Let's sing together, come and fill our hearts. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. For the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, wherever she gathers, in all her formations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the restoration and renewal of creation and the coming of spring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us who are grieving through this wilderness of pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of all governments who have unprecedented difficulties and decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those providing essential services and the loved ones who watch them go to work every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and looking and hoping for healing and relief, we name those who have asked for our prayers. Phyllis, Lorraine, Daniel, Haiti, Greg, Adam, Alfreda, Mary, Walter, Angie, Richard, Dana. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gather us into one and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Peace of the Lord be with you all. So whoever you happen to be with, if you're not um, sharing the two meters or six yards of uh, six feet, I guess, of social distancing, uh, feel free to share the peace with those around you. This is the point in our worship where we would normally receive an offering. Uh, and once again, I say that we appreciate you sending in your offerings 
during this time when we cannot gather and we ask you to remember that most of our costs are fixed. Offerings can be sent by e-transfers or by personal checks made out to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church and mailed to Box 330, Thorsby, Alberta, T0C 2P0. If you have offering envelopes, please include the offering or the envelope number in your message when you send it. So let's have an offering prayer at this time. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So in the rhythm of worship, I mentioned that we gather. Uh, it's gathering, word, meal, sending. We haven't had the opportunity to commune together throughout this time, and once again, uh, we won't today either. We will commune when we are able to gather again together. And we long and we wait for that day. Until then, we will, however, still sing. So we will sing verse 5 of Shepherd Me, O God, and the refrain together. Let us pray. God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. May the one who raised Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share, and be the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. <laughs>